Okay, so I guess uh, the point I'm going to make here is that too much too much fragmentation uh, from the old Unix uh, wise man uh, philosophy bench of creating a tool and a tool that does one thing and does it well is causes a lot of problems. It's the same reason why we don't see a lot of um, micro kernels out there that are actually being used by other other people because interactions and fragmentation of of products caused a lot uh, products or software projects cause a, a lot of problems. Um, so for example, um, I've got an audio system in my Linux, a basic audio system that involves three elements, GStreamer, Alza, and uh, Pulse Audio. I have um, two different kinds of Java to deal with, and I have um, a browser that is upgraded fairly rapidly, and all these variables um, interact to make my ability to just figure out what exactly, or anybody, to figure out exactly what they need to do to get uh, a simple game to work right is is almost uh, is, is a very big task to do, as you can see. To, to use the scientific method to fi figure out exactly what the problem is and what variables need to be in place for sound to work just for the balloon bounce to to play its little song and uh, for the little aliens to to groan when the balloon hits them is as you can see by the way I've outlined the various um, the various um, variables that that could be tested to come up with an actual real result is a real problem. Okay, so let's. Okay, it's almost to the point where you have to say, well, it's got to be down to documentation. Surely, documentation is going to solve this. Now, I've tried to look at um, the. Uh, I'm installing this video easy, so I can cut down my first video into two parts instead of having to go to 1539. The um, I've looked at the documentation for Java. And all it's, it almost, it just barely goes over sound in Linux specifically. It actually bundles sound in Linux with Open Solaris. And that almost implies to me that the drivers have nothing to do with the fact that those sounds are playing and they are or they're not. Or, or the documentation was only written with the assumption that the drivers were in place, but apparently the drivers make a difference. I do have sound in my Apache 1010. I boot in, I hear the song, I can watch YouTube videos. It's just Java. So the truth is, is if the answer does lie with uh, which Linux drivers are loaded up, whether it's OSS or not, um, that that is faulty documentation from Sun Java. Okay. Um, Open GDK. You know, I tried to look at their web pages to see what their whole deal was. It you know, it comes down to it. The best documentation you're ever going to have is actually embodied in source code. So if you're able to look at the source code and you're able to, to program or modify that source code, make it do what you want or think or it needs it should have, then um, then you are at the advantage that Richard Stallman refers to. The goals are the Free Software Foundation. If you're like me, um, the only thing you might be able to come out of by looking at the Open JDK so, uh, um, source code is maybe there might be hard coded in there the name of the device the Open JDK is looking for to allow sound to work or, or mechanism. But since I know the Open JDK doesn't work, and since I know I can't change and modify the program, recompile it, and get it to work for me, all I could do is think that oh just because OpenJDK and SunJava have recently diverged their paths and forked that uh, maybe the answer that's in the OpenJDK source code may tell me actually what Java is using I don't know don't know the answer to that question it may or may not it's not a clear cut concrete answer to arrive at but it's one thing that may be, may be able to be done 
The second set of documentation is the Pulse Audio documentation. And the most it really has is a page where it, it says, these are the things you have to do to have the perfect desktop, yada, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But I think it's really bland on, it's, it's too heavy on some certain details that are almost nonsensical to the average user. And I think it's very bland on other details. And for instance, in the Pulse Audio, uh, perfect desktop uh, guide uh, web page, there's absolutely no mention of, some, of Java on there and how to get sound in Java. So again, you know, is it because they don't have access to the Sun Java source code, therefore they can't really tell you why or why not Java is working? Well, they could do it in a reverse manner. It would be, it'd be a little more difficult to do, but yes, it can be done in a reverse manner. If you know that, if I were to find out that in my Ubuntu 10.04, that if I remove Pulse Audio, suddenly sound and balloon bounce didn't work, then all you'd have to do is know exactly what Pulse is doing to deliver sound to the system to understand what Java needs. It's it's an algebraic solution, but it, it, it would work. The problem is that Pulse Audio, to me, seems so complicated and um, lacks a good level of on-its-face understanding as to how the damn thing works versus the Alza Mixer. I, I literally could probably, in my uh, system that's set up there at home that I have absolutely no sound on, it could be a matter of me checking off the, the incorrect box, and that's the reason why I have no sound in my system. I have no idea. The descriptions that I've seen under volume control, um, there, there are five or six devices or, or analog, analog, um, digital audio inside, outside, um, two channels, four channels, you know, and, and how do I know which one to pick? How do I, you know, I don't even know if Pulse Audio is part of the, is part of the problem or not. I don't know if Pulse Audio is defective in some way and on this install for whatever reason and um, removing it isn't going to produce sound because now Alice has been modified to depend on it but Pulse itself isn't working right so I'm not going to get any sound anyway I don't know I will tell you the uh, the offensive approach the offensive post that actually put me in the situation that I have at home and if you now if you think about going from just solving one little balloon bounce at least with the, the balloon bounce problem I'm having, um, which is going to be part of the solution that I take at home, it's my motivation and reason for doing this, I can approach that scientifically. And within maybe, maybe within reason, it's almost without reason, the various different things that I could try um, at, at, at home with absent having sound at all in the system. I know I'm working with Alza, G Streamer, and Pulse, and this is what screwed my sound, this post right here by No Hozo. Now, <laughs> now knowing what I know now, this solution may have worked for him for him perfectly, but I don't know what drivers he has, what sound you know, there's a whole it seems to be there's a whole different bunch of variables. They have to everything's got to line up just correct and there could be more than one way the thing can line up to get sound to work for it to work and so so here it is I ran the command sudo aptitude purge reinstall linux sound base alza base alza u tools alza linux image you name it wanted me to upgrade the kernel and then upgrade the Ubuntu module or change or replace the Ubuntu modules and install Live A Sound 2. And when I came back in, it was absolutely trashed. Why? I don't know. I haven't run LSMod to find out what sound modules are loaded or if any sound modules are loaded or what. So um, it's most unfortunate. At home, where there's absolutely no sound in, in Linux, so now. My wife's going to be using Windows more, and our, our and our confidential data is going to be more at risk as a result. Of it. She has to do it as a, a matter of practicality, because um, there's some things she needs to do that require sound to work. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> but there is. So that's the situation. So 
let's get back to it. We need better we need better documentation. But the problem is, is getting back to it. I, I, everybody could say we need better documentation in Linux. We need, you know, the only people that are really going to supply good documentation for anything are new users, and the reason why that is is because you see, two years ago or three years ago, or I don't know how many years ago, Pulse was injected into the into the mix. But um, before Pulse existed, someone could have spent. It's very hard to, to 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 create good, accurate documentation at any point. Even when I made my simple Samba's guide, that was only about thirty pages about how to make the most simple connection to a Samba server as possible, and I, I gave the users step by step exact instructions of what they needed to do from start to finish with an exact version of Mandrake, an exact version of Samba, step by step to the end result, and, and with with the exact Windows 2000 operating system, start to finish as to how for them to get to a result where they can get a Samba server running and working for them. Um, I, I edited that several times. It must have taken me about really a full week's worth of work just to document steps I'd taken. Okay, you do it, then you write it down, you do it, and then you write it down. Then, you know, of course, you don't have, you might have to keep going with what you're installing, and so you might miss a step, you might misspell something when you write it out, there may be a better way to present it. But later, after you've you keep redoing, really, literally, you have to keep. I have I had to keep uh, reinstalling the same version of Mandrake and keep setting up the Samba to see that it, I actually had gotten all the steps that I actually took written down, and then get it into a format that that was uh, presentable. And then guess what? As soon as the next version of Mandrake came out six months later, obviously the steps may or may not be the same. Or appropriate. Samba has been very stable. I, uh, a configuration file I used maybe eight years ago will still work now. Um, but that that hasn't changed. See that that's the advantage of the server side. If, if suddenly Samba wanted to um, have you change the face of the configuration file in a manner that Grub acts, <laughs> you, you know, using writing practically stuff that's practically C code in uh, etc. Grub D with four or five different config files instead of just one, you know, think people will start complaining and having problems on the server space. Whereas if they make if you make sure when you make your program, whatever it is that you're doing, that that your config files don't change to the extent that you're just all you have to do is add the additional options to turn them on to to the file that you're in. You can keep that for compatibility that Samba has been so good at providing. So anyway, so I have a big task ahead of me just to do a very simple result. I mean, it's not just Pogo; it's YouTube and all these other things. We have absolutely no sound at home, and so this is the first step. If I can get my sound system back at home, then I'll. If I have the solution, I know I could apply this, whatever the real solution is, to my uh, whole situation and um, come up with a positive result at home. So I'm going to stop now. I'm going to eat lunch. I'm going to finish up the last few tax returns that we're closing out. I'm in pretty good shape for the 15th. I just have to do a couple small returns I was doing for friends and family, and I think I'll be okay. And I didn't get sick, so I'm happy about that. And I am done for now. So I've made my point. I hope I've made my point. The thing is, is that out there in the Linux world, either the distributions have to do the type of testing that I was talking about to actually narrow things down for, for each and every one of the parameters. That, that gets prohibitively costly. Or they have to really second think about whether they're actually going to put a new uh, piece of the puzzle into the mix, uh, such as Pulse. You know, They probably should have gone back to the Pulse developers and made them incorporate that as a part of ALSA and they should have made Alza um, use the same configuration files or or not use it. And all you know, all these distributions need to work together and do the same thing. Ubuntu is a major player, SUSE is a major player, and so is Fedora. I don't ever pitch with Fedora ever doing anything that's gonna be advoc an advocacy advocacy for the for the desktop user. Um, 
they always tend to favor 